Hey, it's Ed, and today I have some tips for anyone that is using Scalar 2 or interested in using Scalar 2 with Logic 2.0 for iPad. There's a nice feature you can take advantage of in Logic 2.0, which is the internal MIDI routing, along with the chord detection feature. It will allow you to take uh, a sequence of chords that you have in Scalar and not import them automatically, but with very little effort, you can get your chords into the chord track in Logic Pro. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the chord track. I'm going to refer to a couple of videos and the links um, about the chord track where people have covered some of that. And I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to cover much on Scalar 2. I'm going to assume people know about Scalar 2 or leave that for another video as well. But I am going to show you how you can quickly get chords in from Scalar 2 into the chord track in Logic Pro. Let's dive right in. So what I've done is I've actually pre-created some chords here on this chord track, and I've given them colors. Um, that's a feature you can, you can find out about elsewhere as well, um, but it just makes it easier to see. So I don't know a way to automatically get these chords entered um, without having them pre-created. So if somebody else comes up with a better method, which is quite possible, uh, I'll link to that video in the description. But for now, this is the best uh, I recommend. So if you have a few chords that you've already got in Scalar, like along the bottom here, I've got several chords already lined up that I'd like to bring into my project. I've just got a handful here for demonstration purposes. I got like four chords, five chords entered in. Right now, just random stuff, doesn't matter what the chords are, because we're gonna actually use chord detection to assign the correct chords to each of these. And so it's up to you to decide, you know, how long the chords are gonna be, how many chords per bar, one chord, two chord, and all that stuff. So basically though, what you wanna to try to do is get the chords lined up. You can always resize them later, so don't worry about that. So I've got one chord per measure here. Though it can be shrunk down, resized. You can add chords later if you want. Same technique. So let's dive in. So here's what I did. First of all, uh, this first track is really the only track you need right here. I've added an instrument track, just a MIDI instrument track. And then what I did after I added it is I went over to the MIDI FX. I clicked plus. I selected Scalar Control. If I could type it right. Scalar Control here. Control 2 right there. Now, I've already added it to save time, so you see it's over here, and uh, there it is. It's loaded up, as you can see. Now, what I also did, after it's loaded, and this is critical, you press and hold on here, and notice the check mark to record MIDI to track here. That has to be done, and you'll notice to, to the right of the Scalar Control plugin, those little orange triangles at the, at the end there, that means the record MIDI to here is happening at that particular MIDI FX. You could have three or four MIDI FX. Those triangles are going to tell you where the MIDI is going to be captured from because it could be at any point in, in the sequence. In this case, we've only got one, so it's at the end. So that's number one. Number two is you have to have an instrument loaded over here in the instrument slot, which I've got Alchemy. I don't know that it matters, but Alchemy seems to be fine. The Alchemy synth seems to work just fine. And the trick with that is I've got to jump over here to the track information. Um, you go over to the track information set. That's that second button right there. You go to the track details in the lower left. If you can see it's highlighted, you click on internal MIDI in right here and you select instrument input. Now I've got, I've got two tracks right now. The second one, don't worry about it. That's for a little demonstration uh, unrelated to this. But this first track, one inst, one alchemy, that is this track that I'm in right now. Now it's gonna sound a little strange, but what you have to do is select your internal MIDI in to come from the, this instance of alchemy that you see right here in this track. And then that's that first one on top right here instrument input, one inst one right there. So what I've got, it's kind of, it kind of seems like it's a loop, but st bear, bear with me because this will prove its value. So let me shrink that down. So now what I've got is just this first track. You, that second track, you're not going to have. You don't need it. But 
If you've got everything set up correctly, what you should be able to do is hit play. And you can actually hear that that scaler is actually playing through that alchemy synth. Now there's no MIDI track there. The MIDI is coming from scaler too. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So now that we've got our chords lined up on top here, all right, I'm gonna tap on this first chord. And what I wanna do is use chord detection to get the chord from scalar into that first slot. So what you're gonna do is again, tap on the lower left to bring up the track details. And you need to have your chord highlighted here, as you see on that chord track. And when you tap that track details, it's gonna pull up the chord settings. As you can see here, you've got your chord name right here that you can select, color. And down here, you'll notice MIDI, use MIDI input right here in blue. Now, if you tap that, it's waiting for input. And now, if you tap on, for example, one of the chords, I'm gonna tap on the B minor. You notice that changed, well, I was already B minor, let me do the next one. Let me do it again. Use MIDI input. Now I'm on that second chord, which is a D6, right? Now I'm going to tap this B minor again. Notice it changed to a B minor. I'm going to tap the next one. A. Watch this. I, I'm, I click the use MIDI input again. It says waiting for input. It's on the C sharp minor seventh, but I'm going to change it to B5. I'm going to tap B5. All right, that one's B5. Now, this is what you can do. If you've got five chords, 10 chords, 20 chords, whatever number you want. Get those chords lined up with anything at all. You can just go through this list just like this. First chord, let's see, I wanna do, I wanna do use MIDI input. I wanted to do the D major, add 13. There it is, D6, that's correct, same chord. Next one, use MIDI input. This time I'll do A major, there it is. Next one, MIDI input, C sharp minor seven, and so on and so on and so on. And there you go, voila, you've got all your chords from Scalar into your chord, uh, chord track within Logic Pro. All right, now that we've got our chords um, down in the second track, I wanna show you a couple things uh, that are unrelated to Scalar and uh, the Scalar import process that I showed at the beginning. But I would like to um, show you these because they're kind of cool, it's, it's really neat what you can do with these chords once you've got them imported into your Logic Pro project. So I've got them, I've got a D6 and an A pasted down here. You can now mess around with these um, chords now that they're here in this section. For example, I can tap on this, I can do convert, and I can convert it to uh, a pattern region, which is something you could, you, you could do with previous versions. But now we've got these session players you can convert it to a session player region. Now, by default, what's gonna happen is, is it's going to convert it to a, um, a drummer for some reason, but what you can do is you go, go to the edit, you can go in here and you can tap on the uh, type. I clicked on acoustic drummer pop rock, you tap on that pop rock right there on the left. Then you up at the very top there, you've got a type. You can change it to keyboard player and and then you can, uh, let's see, change patch. And for some reason, not taken. Let me try that again. Keyboard player. Uh, you've got to select the type. There you go. I'm glad. I'm going to leave this mistake in. You have to select the type in order for it to save the change. So I selected keyboard player, but I didn't choose the songwriter. You got to you got to make a choice from this bottom list here. I don't have all the packs. Uh, so you have to select one of those at the bottom in order for it to change. So there you go. So let's go back out of the editor now. And you can see here, I've now got a songwriter region that I've created with, uh, that's using that D6. And you can do the same thing over here. And um, there's all sorts of things you can do with these chords once you've got them imported into Logic Pro. Um, it's really interesting stuff. So that's about it for today. And um, I will let you know if there's any improvements to this process that I haven't covered and post those links in the description below. So have a good day. Thanks. Take care.